In this small talk, we're going to look at the mechanisms by which redundancy is achieved um, in the genetic code. And there are three mechanisms by which this happens. The wobble effect, isoacceptor tRNAs, and inosine, which is kind of like another form of wobble effect. So by redundancy, what we're talking about here is this. If you look at the codons that encode arginine, what you would see is that um, there's more than one. In fact, there's one, two, three, four, and then down here, five, six. Six different codons encode the exact same amino acid arginine. And in fact, that's the case for most amino acids. Here we have proline that's encoded by one, two, three, four codons. And this fact is called redundancy. The genetic code is redundant. And so what we want to take a look at here is the molecular mechanisms by which this is achieved. So we're going to look at three different codons here and see how all of them encode arginine. So let's take a look here. So here is a transfer RNA, and we're going to call it transfer RNA number one. And it is encoded like any other RNA by a gene. So tRNA gene number one. And it is a transfer RNA that is connected to arginine. Okay, so there is an amino acyl tRNA synthetase, an enzyme that adds arginine onto tRNA number one here. And that's it. This is the only amino acid that this particular transfer RNA will ever be attached to. If we look at the um, anticodon of this tRNA, 3 prime GCG, 5 prime, that means that it can bind within the messenger RNA, the reverse complementary, which means it binds to a 5 prime CGC sequence. So anywhere within the messenger RNA, there is a CGC sequence. This transfer RNA will bind it and bring to the ribosome an arginine to be attached to the growing polypeptide chain. OK, that's pretty straightforward. but Let's look a little bit more closely at this five prime position here because that is called the wobble codon. The five prime most position of the anticodon exists structurally right at a bend, which allows this base here to wobble, for lack of a better word. Now, because of that wobbling, because of the fact that it's right here at the at this bend, if it is a U in that position, it will bind to the normal A within the messenger RNA. But it can also accommodate a kind of unusual base pairing in that it will also bind to a G. If, however, this base in the five prime most position of the anticodon is a G, same thing, it could bind to a C, but it can tolerate this unusual base pair of binding to a U. So it has the ability then of binding to two different codons. Now, if it is a C or an A in this position, there is no wobble effect, and the C will only bind to G, and an A will only bind to U. So let's see then how that changes our situation here. Here again is our tRNA number one bound to arginine with a GCG, and it of course binds a CGC. But now that we understand the wobble effect, we know that this exact same tRNA will not only bind every CGC, but it will bind every CGU as well. Therefore, we have just defined one of the molecular mechanisms by which two different codons, CGC and CGU, will encode the same amino acid, arginine. It gets even more complicated than that. As I mentioned, the reason this tRNA 
only carries arginine is because this tRNA is a substrate of only one aminoacyl tRNA synthetase. These enzymes, aminoacyl tRNA synthetases are the enzymes that take a transfer RNA and add to it a specific um, uh, a specific amino acid. Now there are 20 different uh, aminoacyl tRNA synthetases, one for each amino acid. Here's the thing: some of these enzymes can actually bind different tRNAs. So for example, if we say this particular synthetase, which only holds arginine, can bind to tRNA number one and tRNA number two, that means both of these transfer RNAs are both going to have arginine added to them. And because each one of these tRNAs is different, that means they're going to have different anticodons. As we saw already, tRNA number one has a GCG codon, and let's say tRNA number two has a UCU anticodon. I think I misspoke here. This GCG is an anticodon because it's on a transfer RNA. So now we have a situation where we've got one transfer RNA that has a GCG anticodon that's bound to arginine, and then another, um, another transfer RNA that has a different anticode on UCU. Because each of these transfer RNAs, which are different, number one and number two, both are bound to the same amino acid, we call them iso-accepting tRNAs. Iso-accepting tRNAs. So let's put this on our example here. Here we have our transfer RNA number one encoded by the gene number one. It's bound to arginine, and because of the wobble effect, not only does it bind to a CGC codon, but it also binds to a CGU codon. Furthermore, there is another gene, tRNA gene number two, which encodes tRNA number two, which is also a substrate of the same amino acyl tRNA synthetase that tRNA number one is a substrate of, they are iso-accepting tRNAs, and therefore it also binds to arginine. But because it's a different tRNA, tRNA number two, it has a different anticodon, UCU, which means it binds within the messenger RNA a codon of the sequence AGA. So now we have a situation where CGC, CGU, and AGA all encode the same amino acid, arginine, arginine, arginine. Furthermore, to make things just a little bit more complicated, there are some transfer RNAs where that five prime most position in the anticodon is, if it's an adenine, is post-transcriptionally modified, meaning that tRNA is transcribed, and then there's an enzyme that converts that adenine into an inosine. And now inosine is interesting. It looks like this, and it can tolerate three different base pairings to cytosine, to uracil, and to adenine. So now we have a situation where if there's an anticodon where an inosine is in that five prime most position, it can bind to three different and uh, three different codons. So a CCI can bind to C GGU, a GGC, and a GGA, bringing whatever amino acid it carries, bringing that amino acid to each one of those three codons. So we have, again, three different reasons why or how the genetic code is redundant, right? Again, let's define redundancy here. Notice arginine is encoded by one, two, three, four, four, five, whoops, five, six um, different codons, that's redundancy. Well, the way the molecular mechanism by which that occurs is three different types. From the wobble effect, from inosine, which is kind of like a little bit more complex wobble effect, and then isoacceptor tRNAs.